half when they look very sharp. Yeah, absolutely. I think we, we look for 60 minutes pretty much very sharp. That's absolutely what you want to see and then it's clear. And you have to play a little bit, or we have to control the game a bit more than, as we, than we did and we have to say but they have Norwich. And all my respect, <laughs> they stayed cheeky, they stayed, they stayed, they didn't care about the result, they just enjoyed their football. Um, so, and then we had not enough possession in that in that, in that that period, actually. We had, I think, start of the second half immediately, we could have scored number five and maybe six. Didn't do that. Then they, they, they scored their goal, and we were not, never in danger, really, but we had to work a lot to keep the result like it was. And, um, yeah, it was, of course, everything was good apart from. Ali situation is just, just madness, um, but yeah, that's how it is. Um, what a very early prognosis, obviously, but but it appeared to be his calf or something. Yeah, it's a calf. Yeah, and he felt he was looking obviously behind if something hit him because um, he that's how it felt. It's not a good sign, to no. be honest. So um, <laughs> he will not be ready for Wednesday. I think I can say that already. Yeah, um, I mean, obviously, you've you've only just begun working with uh, Adrian, who you brought in in place of Simon Mignolet. He's now gonna he's gonna get a few games for sure. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So it's good. He was completely relaxed and, and did the um, did the job what he had to do. It's a good goalie for us. So you see it in possession. He's really calm and uh, thinks that's really important. Of course, shot stopping is always the most important thing. But uh, he's good in that. So we we, we knew that from his uh, from the time at West Ham. That's why we signed him. And um, so now he's in charge. That's how it is. And um, good for him. But of course, the little problem is what we have that um, Kuif Keller um, is back in training, but <laughs> um, after his broken hand um, yeah. uh, it probably needs still a couple of days so we have, we have to think about what we what we can do there because all your next goalkeepers are, are, are very young young and most of them pretty much injured so Kweep is probably the closest to be not injured anymore and he is our number three so he would now be um, on the bench obviously we have to see how we can deal with that but if there's a problem we have to find a solution we'll find a solution and then carry on just very quickly because your front players have been involved obviously in summer tournaments international football and all the rest of it I thought it was remarkable how sharp they were given the given the number of matches they've played since the Champions League final yeah, look it's like uh, yeah it's um, they had a break they had a break and actually for, for the body it was it was long enough and they were all um, desperate to come back it was not that anybody asked for a longer um, time off or whatever they were really desperate to go to come back and so they didn't lose a lot for, for their physical um, um, standards and um, so they we can use that as well so it's, it's yeah it's good we have to just we have to now be, be a bit smart so in the next um, especially for the next two games because until Wednesday it's enough time but after that we play Saturday immediately so we have to, to make a few decisions and we'll make them and then um, we have to try to win both of these games which uh, obviously is difficult but tonight look it would be only positive what happened tonight because it's uh, it's the first game of the season 60 minutes really super football everything like you wanted um, respect Norwich a lot and we showed that with our work rate that was all brilliant scored wonderful goals could have scored more that's all good and then the last half an hour of course that's normal that's normal in, in that early stages the big shadow is then the Ali situation and that's why I stand, I stand here and it's like not only being happy because of course it's it's not it's not good for us but again we will find a solution and then carry on thank you Jürgen. Very well. thank you very much that's what you can mm. cut balls back he can he can whip them um, or he can fizz them in yeah. almost like a, a low ping like he did there he has just got the full array of yeah. balls into the box Liverpool fans everywhere would have been saying well we expected five we expected mm. six when you've got four like that in the first half as a player coming out second half how difficult is it to maybe go and well, how, to the short. Yeah, how many times have we seen that teams coming in at 3-4 and you're thinking, oh, this could be 7 or 8. It rarely materialises like that. I think there's something inside you that doesn't overextend yourself when you don't need to. If you can conserve a little bit of energy or if you're just not right on the edge, then the magic doesn't quite happen. I think that's exactly what we've, we've just seen there. They did more than enough in the first mm. half. They didn't need to go and bust a gut in the second half. Extremely comfortable evening for Liverpool. We're delighted to say that their captain, Jordan Henderson, is waiting to speak to us live at Anfield. Jordan, thanks very much indeed for joining us. Pretty perfect start to the season there. Nearly. <laughs> um, no, I think obviously first half was very good, but still a lot to improve on. Second half, we can control the game a lot better um, and keep the ball 
um, and, and more moments. But overall, delighted, um, but still a lot to improve on going forward. That first half we were just discussing we was so comfortable for you. You're never going to go and do that again in a second half at this stage. No, but we can keep the ball better. Um, definitely we can keep them running, keep them chasing the ball, which we didn't do well enough at times, so that's one thing we can improve on. But they came out second half and they had a goal, so fair play to them. Um, and overall, we've got to be delighted with the, with the result. Jordan, a near-perfect game. Um, in the first half, obviously, we saw your goalkeeper, Alisson, who's been such a good signing so far, going down with what looked like a, a calf injury. How much of a problem is that for you? Well, it's a big blow. Hopefully it's not as bad as it looked, you know, but yeah, it's, it, it's a big blow. But to be fair, Adrian's come in, um, he's, he's, he's been good in the last few days of training. He showed that he can he can handle himself as well tonight with the ball um, and made a couple of good saves. So um, that's a good, a good option for us, but hopefully Ali can, can get back quickly. Jordan, you had a near perfect season last year, but you still finished runners up. Can you go one better? Is the belief in the dressing room that you can go one better this year? Well, there's definitely belief in the dressing room, you know, we've got a great togetherness and a, um, a great squad of players, you know, that want to want to improve, they want to learn, they want more more success, they're still hungry. And that's important, you know, that's all you want. You want to improve as a team all the time, you want to keep getting better, take each game as it comes. And at the end of the, end of the season, we'll see where we're at. Is collecting the Champions League, getting over the line, being winners going to help you in that? I definitely think it can help us um, with the experience and yeah, like you see, and winning the winning the trophy was a big moment for us, and, and hopefully we can use that in the right way going forward. Um, but that's gone now. We want to focus on the future. We want to win more trophies. We want to be more successful. But that's easier said than done. You know, there's so many good teams in the Premier League and in Europe. Um, so for us, it's about concentrating on what we need to do. We need to work hard on the training pitch, improve, listen to what the manager has to say and what he wants us to do, and and try and implement that on the pitch. And just finally, Jordan, do you think you're going to need that kind of momentum and consistency you had last season to go and do it and go on better? Yeah, definitely, you know, you need consistency, you need performance level high all of the time and that's when you need all of the squad. So that'll be important. Important, But like I say, we've just got to concentrate on what we need to do and we need to just keep keep doing the things that we're good at, keep, keep working on the things that we need to improve on um, and put in good performances like we did tonight. Well played. Thanks again for joining us. Thank you. Cheers. Jordan Henderson live from us. Striving for a little bit more, even though it is only mm. day one of the season. No, Jordan always says the right stuff. You know, he's uh, very professional. I'm sure he's a leader within that dressing room. Um, and, he, and he's, as long as, as long as his manager as well, exactly the same characters they demand. You know, he'd be demanding in there. There's a lot of younger boys around that dressing room as well. And uh, they keep them in shape. You know, they keep them on their toes all the time, making sure they're doing the correct things. Uh, for the benefit of this great football club. Mm. We're going to hear from Jurgen Klopp, hopefully, on uh, Alisson's injury. The word is, from Anfield, that it's his calf, mm. which yeah. you, you felt was the lesser of two evils. It's the lesser of two evils, yeah. You can see he's, uh, he, he turned behind. He felt something big go, almost like a popping sensation. Yeah. I've been there before. And um, the good sign was that he walked off. And, you know, there's only two things that it could be, really. Your Achilles or your calf. Calf is definitely the better of the two scenarios mm. if that's the case. Because mm. without stating the obvious, he was a big part of that consistency we were talking to Jordan Henderson about. Well, he was a problem what was sold. There was a problem, obviously, with the goalkeeper. It wasn't, granted, it wasn't Adrian, who they brought in now from West Ham, who's a very credible goalkeeper. But he was a major part, along with Van Dijk, in them lifting the European Cup. Near perfect start to the season, I said to Jordan Henderson. Mm. He said nearly. And that's because they're disappointed at conceding a goal in the second half. Yeah, it was. It was, uh, it was a really good uh, goal from Norwich's point of view. Well worked, a lovely little run from Puki and a great weighted ball. I suppose from Liverpool's point of view, Tim, you know, you could look at a couple of different scenarios. If we just pause it there, you can see that, you know, left back, Robertson playing them on. Who, who would you, where would you pin the blame here? I think, the, what I would say is, Michael, there's not a lot of pressure on the ball. So I think they come up a little bit too quickly. I think if they stay a little bit deeper then it eradicates any sort of problems. But they come up, they rush up and they're not coming up as a line. And there's Robertson, he comes up late and he plays everyone on side there. Yeah. But I think, let's give him the credit, that is a great pass, a fantastic run and a wonderful finish. So give the benefit to Norwich and not having many, much credit tonight, not, not much to shout about, but that was a very, very good goal. And we're over-critical with, with Liverpool's defending, I feel. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, I thought Gomez possibly should have known where Pukki was. But in, in general terms, it's a fantastic through ball. Mm. I mean, if that was Firmino or, or one of the Liverpool players, we'd be yeah. raving about that through ball. Great goal from Norwich. And I admired the way they kept going right to the end. They actually showed a lot of pride and that'll stand them in good stead for the rest of the season. It certainly will. More reaction to come from Anfield when we come back. Jurgen Klopp will talk to us. But John Barnes did. He's been with us all evening. What do you make of it, John, from your vantage point? It was a good performance. I mean, you know, from the point of view of Liverpool, they did what was necessary. Uh, from Norwich's point of view, coming to the Premier League, going to the European Champions, a fantastic team who finished second by losing one game. And it was a terrible start for them, of course, you know, an own goal to put Liverpool one nil up when really you want to keep it tight for as long as possible. But Norwich kept their belief. They paid out from the back. They created a few chances. What you could see is the individual quality that Liverpool had. They hit the target when they scored the three goals or four goals by half time. Then they didn't necessarily outplay Norwich because Norwich had good possession, got in good areas in and around the box but it's that individual quality whereby the shots went too high they didn't hit the target the final pass the final cross but second half Norwich showed a lot of ambition they attacked they created chances so this Norwich team will give 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 um, the opposition a lot of problems pleasing thing from Norwich's point of view is that if you can create as many chances as they did against Liverpool against weaker opposition they should be okay but unfortunately for them a 4-1 defeat which isn't great but from Liverpool's perspective a fantastic start albeit disappointed to lose the goalkeeper John, we all know that the transfer window is now slammed shut. Um, Liverpool are going with the same again, playing a very similar way to, to what they did last season. You know, in assessing the squad, would you have made any surgery? Would you, you have added one or two players to the squad? Or do you think Jurgen Klopp is happy with where he is? Well, what I've said from um, the end of the season is that Liverpool may need to strengthen the squad in terms of getting squad players. I think that teams like Manchester United, um, of course, Chelsea on a transfer embargo, Arsenal, they need to sign first-team players to come into the team. Liverpool don't need that. I think we know what our first team is going to be. You look at the front three, look at the midfield three, the back four. So if they need to supplement it with buying squad players, fine. But I don't think it was a necessity. Oxley chamberlain and, and Joe Gomez are like two new players. You know, so I didn't necessarily feel that you, as much as we have now a goalkeeping I won't say it's a crisis, but I don't think that that's, that's necessary. I think the squad is still strong enough. And in terms of Alisson, you could, you could hear Jurgen Klopp's disappointment, understandably, because we've seen how crucial he is. But Adrian has played 125 times in the Premier League before yeah. tonight. It, it, was that good business for you? I obviously didn't expect to see him so, no, so you, early. No, you didn't, but of course, and he's a good goalkeeper. However, um, Alisson has brought a calmness, not just to the, to, to the team, but to the crowd. You know, himself and Van Dijk have calmed the crowd down when crosses are coming and they're cool. Now, while Adrian is fantastic, he has to now form a relationship with a the crowd and 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 the back four but hopefully Allison won't be out for too long but i'm sure he'll be an adequate replacement because you know i've seen a bit of him he's calm he's good on the ball he speaks so i don't think that that's going to be much of a of an issue because i don't expect Allison. i'm hoping for him not to be out for too long and that perfect start for liverpool really i mean they would have taken that the consistency they're going to require now for the season john and it's expected because as i said the demands that Jurgen Klopp puts on those players to perform in training day in, day out, in matches week in, week out, regardless of whether it's the first game against Norwich, it's against Manchester City or Man United, or it's against Grimsby in a, in a, in a, in a League Cup match. You know, the, the demands he puts on them to play with intensity and determination, I know they will do. And then you can see tonight the quality that they actually have, as well as that determination, shone through. John, pleasure to have you with us tonight. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. All the best. John Barnes live at Anfield. Now, we just want to clear uh, something up before, before we leave as well. We told you about uh, some of the slight rule changes uh, before uh, the game, one of which is that no longer an attacking team can stand in a defensive wall. However, Tim, when Trent Alexander-Arnold had this free kick, we saw what Liverpool have come up with. Yeah, well, Liverpool put a three-man wall just in front of Norwich's wall, which is totally legal. He cannot hit this any better. I mean, it was the perfect strike. If you look at Trent after he hits it, he turns, turns away. He's already reeling away. He thinks he's already scored. That is a great save from Krull. But they get around the rule by sticking the wall just in front of Norwich's wall, which they do it because they want Tim Krull to see it very, very late. But he does, and he makes a great save. But if you look at Trent here, when we play it again, we look at Trent, he's reeling away. He thinks he's scored. He gets it past at a great height, and Tim Krull pulls off a magnificent save. 